Yes, we're making breakfast. And if you're new here, that means we're sailing today. Brandy put in a special request of cinnamon pancakes? Cinnamon roll pancakes. Cinnamon roll pancakes. Never had them before. First attempt. Today we're heading back up to St. Thomas. We've spent a lot of time here in St. Corey. We extended our stay a little bit because we've been having so much fun. We've met friends. We have friends here. We've just had an awesome time. So we've been here a little bit longer than what we should have been. But then Elsa rolled in. It is cruising along uh, west northwest at 31 miles per hour. So it's holding on to its category one status. We have maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour and wind gusts of 90 miles per hour. Once hurricane season starts rolling through, we have to start moving. Yeah, it seems to be once the first one rolls through, then we actually get in gear and head wherever we're planning on being for the season. Which that means Curacao for us this go round. But first, we need to get back up to Brewers Bay, St. Thomas, so we can pick up packages, do some a little bit of provisioning, and some of the last minute boat fixes that we want to do. But Bre first, breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> and let me tell you, it already smells delicious. I hope it comes out right. I didn't follow a recipe. He's fell on the ground. My skills are not what they used to be. I haven't made pancakes in ages. Yeah, you're, you're doing a bang up job. <laughs> and for the topping, we have frosting. <laughs> it's cream cheese, vanilla, erythritol, and any milk of your choice. Mm. It is tasty. Well, let me taste. Mmm, tastes like a cinnamon roll. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little reef over here. So for one last go, Brandy and I decided to check it out yesterday. We weren't going to show you guys because it was just a very small dive, but we got a little surprise. We saw a hawksbill turtle and we've never seen one dive no. in before. So pretty. I drove down and there he was just checking us out and hanging out. The reef out here was okay. Um, it was pretty deep, so a lot of diving down for me. Bo was searching for lobster. We weren't able to find anything, but again, this reef along all of St. Croix has been well worth our time here. I'm really glad that we, we came back because last year we were only here for a couple days and I'm really glad that we made this a stop and we stayed for a lot longer than we planned. Yeah. The dive out here was deep, about 40 feet average, but once you got down, it was pretty. It wasn't as much life as we've seen in some other spots, but it was still a good dive. It was a good farewell. <laughs> but speaking of, we gotta get all of this in so we can get to sailing, so we can get everything else done so, to get out of here. So we can hopefully get in by sunset. <laughs> Shut down. Uh, mouthful. Woo! I'm stuffed. Now that our bellies are full, gotta get to St. Thomas. Hopefully, it's gonna be a nice, easy ride. A lot of people do ask what app we use to navigate. This is Navionics. We're down here in Christian says St. Croix, and we're gonna head all the way up to Brewers Bay where we are before because we do really like how quiet it is up there. So I am going to mark that spot and it does its magic. It's like we've got 39 nautical miles going four knots. It will take us eight hours. All right, off anchor or on motor? Uh, I think we should raise the main, it, just because it's so easy to raise it on anchor. Maybe just keep it loose and we'll 
motor out away from all these boats. So I'm thinking we just kind of let uh, the current and wind take us and we drift behind Blue Nomad right here. Okay. And then we'll hit the channel. And then we can raise the head once we get out there. Twenty-five feet. Okay. Bo always has the very important job of making sure we're swung the right way, so I have a good angle to actually leave the anchorage on. If not, I have to compensate, which is not horrible, but it's nice that he can time it just right. Which, we're on the right swing, so gotta go. All right, we're free. Not paying attention. I spooled myself. Now next, let's hope it's a tuna spooling us. Yeah. So much for Elsa clearing the path of seaweed. There's so much out here. I don't even know if it's worth fishing. Always worth fishing? Always worth fishing? That's true. You can't catch anything if you don't have a line in the water. But now, we're gonna try to fly the drone and hopefully Bo doesn't catch it with his head this time. But hey, look, it's already healed. So, got one there, one there, one here. So she wasn't able to grab it and it came right towards me and I grabbed it and the blades, <laughs> blades got too close because I was holding the remote too. Little flesh wounds. Surf surface mix. Surface mix, yeah. learned our lesson on catching the drone <laughs> we're gonna heave two that way the boat's steady and it can handle gusts a lot better and we're gonna be in like a constant motion I remember being nervous the first time heaving two mainly because I didn't understand the inner workings of it all but once we did it it all made sense and it got way easier the more we practiced so more or less by heaving two you're stopping the boat from moving forward and there are a couple ways to do it, and every boat is different. And in our experience, we turn into the wind, tacking Sersha, allowing the head sail to backfill while leaving it heated in and not touching it. And then we ease out the main sheet. Once we do this, we turn the wheel windward and lock it off. If we have to, then we will adjust the main sheet to make sure she's completely hove to. And we know this happens when we're drifting about one and a half knots to leeward.
There are lots of reasons that you might want to use the heave to, but for us, we've hove to to make coffee or a hot meal after days of beating into waves, to let Una, our pup, use the bathroom, or even so I could use the bathroom because it was my shift and Bo was trying to get an ounce of sleep, or to get a fish on board, or even when we were repairing the crack in our hull offshore. We could possibly use a heave to in a nasty storm. We've heard of stories like the 1979 Fastnet race, where they were hit with forced hen winds, and out of 303 yachts, 100 of them were knocked down. 77 rolled and five sank. And it was believed that all of those that hove to survived with no serious damage. Of course, you need to take into consideration a lot when you're in a storm like that. But it's good to know, even though we're a little rusty, we have the skill and we'll keep practicing. get right back on that saddle. Now we need to undo the heave too. So I just need to go ahead a little bit to our port side, fill in our head sail. I'm actually gonna bring in the main so it doesn't tack over so quickly, uh, heavily, strongly, loudly, all of the things, so. So it doesn't break anything. So it doesn't break anything. You kind of have to go fast. I honey. know. <laughs> you got to be able to whip yourself through the wind. And I could use the motor. Most people will probably use the motor right now. Yeah. But let's pretend we don't have a motor. Come on. Nope. Yeah. Yep. Maybe. Yep. No. Nope. No. See how I'm leaning? It's not helping. Or you could just jive. There you go. Now this is the type of sailing we cherish. A steady bream reach with fair seas and a calm breeze. Since we've been out here sailing, we've had our fair share of rough, wet, and uncomfortable sails. So it's nice to soak up the sun on the deck and actually stay dry. So as long as Wilson, our autopilot, does his job, we're able to sit back, relax, and finally enjoy the ride. We would love to say that all of our sails are easy and breezy, but it's just not the reality. So when we do have a lush sail, you best bet we are going to enjoy it even more. There's a lot that we want to get done once we drop the anchor. So for now, we're just going to take this all in. Anchor is dropped. We're back in Brewers Bay. Next are our friends, Mike and Brittany. You remember them? We shot their engagement pictures in Beckley.
<laughs> you all done with the... <laughs> Taking a break. It's very comfy. Maxing and relaxing. Enjoying the dance music. <laughs> There's like nobody in here. I know. It's the last time, last time we were here, there was at least 30 boats. 30? Yeah. No. Easy. Now there's like maybe 10. So now that we're here, we are only here hopefully for a week. Hopefully. Just to pick up some packages, do the cement provisioning, and make the list of all of the items that we need to get fixed prior to leaving to go down south for our hurricane shelter. Yes, we are heading south for hurricane season. Uh, it's not going to be Grenada and it's not going to be St. Vincent, but it's going to be Curacao, we think at this moment, nothing's changed. So we were heading, going to head to Bonaire, but unfortunately it looks like it's a little too packed now and we're just gonna head straight to Curacao because we may be getting hauled out there, still in the works, but we need to focus on getting everything done here so we can set sail as soon as possible before any more storms decide they wanna show up. Were you dancing in the background? <laughs> You're such a jerk. <laughs> 